Salutations, everyone. We're back. And, um, as always, we are playing 1914, Exodus Alice. The autumn of 1917 is by our chart. And we will be reading, of course, from the great book, is The Marne, 1914. So, um, we're picking up where last week left off. Exactly, as per usual. And I'll just give a sweeping view of the board here. Any thoughts? Any thoughts, BFC? Mm, looking bleak for the central powers. Yes, definitely. Alright, so, I think we are on, what, like turn 14 now? Something like that? Yeah, something I don't like remember. that. And um, I guess we will see you guys after the next turn. Maybe turn 15. All right. See ya. All right. So the autumn of 1917 is over. And now we proceed into the winter of 1917. But first, a fact from our lovely book here. As tradition, the Sebastian Bastion. On September 4th, the 6th Army concentrated its artillery fire on the front along the Mirtre between the forest of Vicheront, or Vitremont and Corbexu. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't read so much French. But, should not draw, but could not drive the French out. The next day, Rep Hook's guns shifted their fire to the area northeast of Nancy. Roughly 3,000 shells rained down on the Ammons Heights. Uh, Zylanders, 1st Corps, fired off a 1,000 howitzer rounds on the 5th of September. Day and night, the deafening artillery duel continued. Wave after wave of gray-clad Bavarian infantry debauched, debauched from the uh, Champagneau Forest under the cover of darkness to storm the front of the Grand Cornet only to be cut down by the murderous crossfire from the French 75s, concealed on the reverse slopes of Mont d'Amence, Mesa, and the Plain de Surek Bate, guarding the eastern and southern approaches to the Grand Cornet. Still, the future of La Position de Nancy hung by a thread on the second day of Repuck's offensive. So... Well, it's been a wild round, so uh, where do we start? The Austrians, of course, seems like a good place to start. Pulled out of Serbia and moved into Budapest, and pulled out of Venice and moved into Tyrolia. Built a few men, and that was pretty much it. The Germans uh, retook Karelia from their guys in Moscow and landed a couple guys in Livonia. Um, fix that thing there. And that was pretty much it. Did not attack in Berlin. The French then did attack in Berlin, and I don't know how did that battle go. I think it went pretty pretty towards the French way, didn't it? They hit yeah. a lot. I think they hit a lot more than the Germans did. But either way, there's still quite a bit of forces there. The French also landed in uh, Prussia with their airship there and uh, moved their train along. They got some lend lease from the Russians there because we're out as French sculpts. They did sink the Austrian dreadnought that was there. The Austrian Dreadnought did get two hits off, though, a submarine and damaged the battleship. Um, I think that's pretty much it for them. They could not move this because the uh, channel was in Ottoman hands. Then the English went up and sank those German transports, uh, landed some guys in Finland. And those mines are now German, by the way. Or will be on the German term. Um, and... Uh, built some transports up there and some men in London. Did not attack here, but they did attack here and almost wiped them out, but they could not get that last hit that they needed. They got a couple guys there in uh, Kazakhstan, pushed their guys up from India into Persia. Got some uh, guys in India waiting in the ranks. And um, I think that's it for them. The Ottomans then pushed up a lot of forces into Bulgaria, took Serbia, um, attacked them here in Ukraine, but only killed an artillery piece, and uh, but did not have anything killed, so that went their way, actually. 
Um, then they push their men up into Mesopotamia. And they uh, wiped the floor with the Americans here in Transjordan. That was pretty much it. The Italians built a couple transports here. Moved all their guys from Trieste and Venice to attack here. And uh, did not hit hardly at all. I think they only killed one thing. And out of all those people. So they only got three hits. And the Austrians, to their uh, defense, did not hit very well either. Um, yeah. The Americans uh, shifted around some transports here and all that. Attacked uh, Vienna. And t did get a few artillery pieces uh, kill killed. But they did um, take out quite a few ar Austrian infantry. Landed some reinforcements. Those are the guys from Egypt. Down there. Uh, landed their battleship here. They're a cruiser from here, and um, landed some more reinforcements on the way in Morocco, built a couple transports and some guys. And that's it. So, if you see anything you want to add? Not really. That's not. just the synopsis of the turn. I'm just trying to hang on here for a little bit longer, I guess. All right. Oh, a little update on the money chart. Um, the Italians and the Austrians are both at 10. The French and the English are both at 40, and everyone else is on 20. Except for the Russians. Uh, they are not even on the board. At least they should be. Yeah, they are. They're on 30. That's it. So, um, we are moving, like I said, into the winter of 1917. Where are the Austrians at? The, 15. the Austrians are at 15. 15, okay. And, um, uh, yeah. And we're on 1, 2, 3, 7, 11, 12, 13. We're on turn 15, it looks like. So, yeah. Uh, I guess we will see you after turn 15. And then we move into the, uh, key year of 1918. So, see you then. Alright, we are back Woo! after turn the winter offensive. Uh, 15, it's I think. Yeah. The uh, 1917 winter of 1917. And, uh, but first we got our fact, BFC does. Okay. There were no signs of such frenetic activity at German headquarters in Luxembourg. Once in possession of Bulo's pronouncement of total victory over Lam Razik's 5th Army, Mulkey and his staff, by the evening of 30 August, believed that they had a clear picture of the situation. Despite small gaps among 1st, 2nd, and 3rd armies, the entire right pivot wing was on the march again. Everywhere, Mulkey assured nervous leaders in the German state capital the enemy was in full flight. And when the 1st Army the following day reported that it had swept all opposing forces from the field, Mulkey's concerns about a flanking movement out of Fortress Parish vanished, as did a sudden panic attack when the British landed four battalions, 3,000 men of Marine Light Infantry and Artillery under Sir George Aston at Ostend on 27-28 August to secure the BEF's supply base there and possibly to harass Kluck's lines of communication. For they were, were re-embarked within 72 hours when Sir John French moved his main supply base to St. Nazaire in the Bay of Biscay. All the Germans found at Austin was a train load of dead horses shot because there had been no ships on which to evacuate them. Most critically, during the night of 30-31 August, Mulkey received the welcome news that 8th Army had shattered General A.B. Samsonov's Russian Oops. Russian 2nd Army at Tannenberg. Tales of Russian terror accompanied the news. It was time to set all the major pieces in play for the final act in the great drama in the West. It's about to be right. Aldemar in there in that book. So, um, we are moving into the spring of 1918 now. And uh, the Allies have the uh, Central Powers hanging on uh, by a thread. So let us see what has happened. The uh, Austrians pulled everything back into um, 
Austria or into Vienna. And they um, got the Americans down to a man and a couple tanks, killed the fighters and the artillery. The Germans then um, moved everybody down from Poland into Livonia, from Karelia. Um, and they did battle at um, the Berlin, but they did not kill any Frenchmen. And the Frenchmen uh, got a few guys. I don't think it was much, but still, they did not kill anyone. The French then killed the last man in Tyrolia. Because, oh, the Austrians did leave a man in Tyrolia to defend. The French came down and killed him for the Italians. They uh, took Cilicia. They attacked Berlin. Um, I don't totally remember what happened that. I think the French lost a couple infantry and the Germans lost a few things. Um, but as you see, there's still a big giant standoff there. Uh, they moved their transport back out. They got their battleship there. Um, they moved everyone up in the big long train, moved their battleship back from 18, moved their subs back from 18, pulled their transport up from 28 while the um, Egypt was still in uh, friendly hands. And I think that was it for them. The English then had a major offensive here, pushed into Mesopotamia. Uh, they also pushed in, took Sevastopol, pushed into here with no casualties on either side, and did nothing there. Pushed up some guys from India, and they also um, pushed into Karelia, took that, and dropped a few more reinforcements off there. Um, built some guys in London and in India as well. The Ottomans then stationed a large army in Ankara and uh, left a man in Mesopotamia. Moved their Bulgarian army up to Romania. Uh, they attacked and actually killed a tank in Ukraine. And that was... Oh, they and they also took Egypt and Albania. And that was it for them. The Italians then uh, took Bohemia since the French opened the door for them. Took and went went in and took Bohemia, moved their artillery and their six men into Vienna to reinforce there. They also took their transports around and dropped a plane, a couple artillery and a man off there, built a couple more men, and that was it. The Americans then landed in Egypt and were soundly defeated by the Ottomans, uh, moved some reinforcements up from America into Morocco, and built some more guys. Anything to add? That was just mm. a synopsis. Any thoughts? We are freezing out here, so it was kind of like fitting for the winter offensives. I think the Allies are, you know, are going to win just a matter of time, depending if maybe the maybe the Central Powers have a couple good victories left. Maybe it's just it's hard to beat the tanks because they they absorb so many. Hits. Yeah, the tanks are getting kind of ridiculous. The Germans built a tank, but then the French moved in a few more, so they got six tanks there now. There's, I mean, there's five tanks it's, for the Austrians there, four tanks for the Americans. So, um, we got more. Ger we got another German tank on the way, unless they can manage to kill it before it gets there. Uh, I mean, the the uh, English are pumping out tanks here. The uh, Ottomans just built a tank, so. Um, yeah. So, I guess, uh, are we going to uh, wrap it up for tonight, I'm assuming? Yeah, we'll probably, let's we'll try again, I think. Try again next week. Next week. All right. I don't really want to surrender but, yet, because I'm, I'm still having fun with it, and still having some victories. Well, I guess that's it from the Bastion this week, and uh, we shall see you next week. And this has been a presentation to you, brought to you by the Guardsman. At the Sebastian Bastion, and this is the Guardsman. Over and out.